genes of you and me. We're all made of DNA. We're all made of the same chemical DNA. We're all made of DNA. Hello, and welcome to the pilot episode of Discovering New Advances, or DNA, a podcast that keeps you up to date on the world of genetics in an easy-to-understand language. So whether you are a student in middle school or grandparent, you will easily be able to follow along. I'm Kira, and on this pilot episode, I'll give you an introduction lesson on the basics of genetics. The following episodes will either keep you updated on genetic advances in the scientific world or teach more lessons on genetics. So if you're already familiar with how genetics work, you can skip to the following episodes about news on the genetic advances happening today and how it is affecting our world. For more information, please visit dnapodcast.com or email info at dnapodcast.com. Again, that's info, I-N-F-O, at dnapodcast.com. So let's jump right into the lesson. In order to understand genetics, we must first start with DNA. So DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. And DNA is basically the blueprints for building different parts of the cell. So each cell has a different function it needs to carry out in order for the body to be able to function properly. For instance, a cell in the liver will differ from a cell in the heart. DNA is responsible for this difference. You're probably familiar with DNA shape. It is quite iconic, as it looks like a twisted ladder. This twisted ladder shape is referred to as the double helix. So going with this ladder analogy, a ladder has two parts, the sides and the rungs. In DNA, the sides of the ladder are made up of sugar phosphate, while the ladder's rungs are made up of four nitrogenous bases. The four nitrogenous bases are represented by the letters A, C, T, and G. There are two letters per rung. A only pairs with T, and C only pairs with G. Again, A only pairs with T, and C only pairs with G. So A and G are purines, and T and C are pyrimidines. So in order for these two letters to stay connected, they are bonded to each other. The bonds that hold these two letters together, which again make up the rung, are hydrogen bonds. So A and G are purines, and T and C are pyrimidines. A pyrimidine is a single ringed base, while a purine is a double ringed base. So these letters I keep mentioning, A, C, T, and G, are short for longer names. A stands for adenine, T stands for thymine, C stands for cytosine, and G stands for guanine. So I just threw a lot of vocab and concepts at you already, so let's review it before moving on. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, which is in the shape of a twisted ladder where the sides are made up of sugar phosphates and the rungs are made of nitrogenous bases, which are A, C, T, and G. A only pairs with T and C only pairs with G to make up those rungs. Therefore, a purine and a pyrimidine pair together. If two purines pair together, that rung on the ladder would be too wide since purines have a double ringed base. That's why a purine and a pyrimidine only pair together. An easy way to remember that thymine and cytosine are pyrimidines is that both thymine and cytosine have Ys in them, just like the word pyrimidine. So if the nitrogenous base has the letter Y in it, then it is a pyrimidine. If not, it's a purine because adenine and guanine do not have Ys in them, therefore they are pyrimidine. Easy way to remember it. So let's go with the analogy to help understand what the nitrogenous bases do. So if you think of these nitrogenous bases as letters, when combined, they form words, which then form sentences. These sentences make up the genetic code and are called genes. The number and order of the nitrogenous bases, again, A, C, T, and G, determine what proteins to make, just like the number and order of words determine different meanings, like CAT, C-A-T, is different than TAC, T-A-C. Even though they have the same letters, it is the order of the letters that make them different and have a different meaning. So basically, the purpose of the genes are to instruct the cell to make proteins, and proteins help the cell carry out specific functions, such as working with other cells to make seeing possible in the eye. Again, to review, genes are made up of DNA strands. Therefore, one strand of DNA contains many genes. Each cell in our body contains an enormous amount of DNA. If one cell, if you pulled out that one cell of DNA and stretched it out, it would be three meters long. So just to put this into perspective, this is about as long as a car. So in order to fit all that DNA into one tiny cell, chromosomes are used. So the DNA wraps around proteins. Then these proteins are packed tightly until they form a chromosome. And a chromosome has the shape of like a skinny X. Through all these steps, chromosomes are very efficient in storing DNA. The number of chromosomes in each cell differs between organisms. But since we're all humans, let's take a look at what's in our own cells. 
Each human has 46 chromosomes. That is as long as we don't have a disease that would alter this, such as Down syndrome. But we'll cover genetic diseases on a later episode. So assuming we're a healthy human, we receive 23 chromosomes from both our mom and our dad. This explains how we resemble our parents. It's because we receive this genetic material from our parents, we look like them. Now when scientists look at chromosomes, they pair them up with a total of 23 pairs, which again is 46 chromosomes. Let's take a look at a certain pair of chromosomes, the ones that determine your gender. Your mother, just like every other healthy female, has two X chromosomes. Your father has one X chromosome and one Y chromosome, just like every other healthy male. If you inherit a Y chromosome, you will be a male. If not, you're a female. It's as easy as that. So let's do another quick review of what we just learned. We received 23 chromosomes from each parent, which equals 46 chromosomes in total. So you get 23 from mom and 23 from dad for a total of 46 chromosomes. These numbers are for humans, as other organisms are different. Again, these numbers are also for healthy humans without genetic disorders. Again, we're going to cover that on a later episode. Women have two X chromosomes, while men have a X chromosome and a Y chromosome. Therefore, if you have a Y chromosome, you're a male. So now, going back to the idea that we look like our parents, many of us also act like our parents. This is due to not only genetic influences, but also environmental, because parents are usually the ones that raise us. These features or qualities in a person are known as traits. There are two different types of traits. Physical, the characteristics that make up one's physical makeup, such as hair color and eye color. These physical traits are known as phenotypes, while the other trait is behavioral, the characteristic of the way one acts, such as how a dog will want to fetch. Well, that does it for today's lesson. For more information on genetics, please visit dnapodcast.com for more episodes and this lesson along with others, not only in an audio format, but also in a written format with visual aids to help explain some of these concepts. That way you can see them and kind of know what I'm talking about. There's also a contact forum there for easy access to send in feedback about the show or any questions. Or you can email directly at info at dnapodcast.com. Again, that's info at dnapodcast.com. So to keep in contact with the show, you can also like it on Facebook and follow it on Twitter, both at forward slash DNA podcast. And also please drop a review in iTunes. It's highly appreciated and the best way to increase the show's numbers so others like yourself can benefit from the show. You can find all those links I mentioned on the website dnapodcast.com. So if you remember one thing, just remember dnapodcast.com. You can get all this information. Thanks for listening and join me next episode to learn and discover new advances in the world of genetics.